It's all over the house. Come on, he's worthy, he's worthy. God bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Amen. Amen. Can't get tired now. I know, I know, I know. I know. Amen. Bless God. This is the celebration. Can't get tired during the celebration. Amen. Amen. We just thank God. Thank God. Amen. I don't, I don't know where the fire started this morning. But I see a lot of folk caught on fire today. Let, let me tell it the right way. You didn't catch on fire. You already had the fire. You just needed somebody to stoke the flames a little bit. I, see, uh, you young folk don't know anything about that. Old pot belly stove about to go out and you got to... Come on now, y'all don't know nothing about that. And thank God neither do I. Amen, but whew. lean over to your neighbor, ask the neighbor, you still on fire? I, I, I smell smoke somewhere, somebody burning, somebody's on fire. Though, though, see, somebody came in here today. Somebody came in ready to praise the Lord, and, and thank God for that. But see, somebody's been going through some things, and they came in kind of low and kind of dry. But let me tell you something. Nothing wrong with coming to the house of the Lord a little bit low and a little bit dry, because if you get right next to the right person that's already caught on fire, if you stand there long enough, the fire that's in them is going to catch on to that one that's dry. Because I found out that dry things catch on fire. And I dare you, if you came in here a little bit dry today, I, I dare you to just to lift up your hand and just tell them thank you. If you were going through last night, last week, I just dare you to lift up your hand and tell them thank you. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to leave that alone. Y'all done. I've seen things my eyes have never seen before today. Amen. Amen. Felt things. Bless God. Bless God. God doing a new thing. Amen. God bless you. I'm, I'm going to move on with the service, but i seen folks shout. I ain't never seen shout. Where, 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 where's, where was that big man that was up here? I don't... When the Lord... <laughs> wasn't ashamed to get his praise on. And let me tell you something. We ought not be ashamed to get our praise on, especially in the house of God. Let's give him one more praise in the house. If you're going to praise him anywhere, ought to be able to praise him in the house of the Lord. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. Amen. I wondered. I wondered. Whew. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Loosening up some things in here. Amen. Amen. Let us, let us, let us pray. I'm not going to be before you long, but let us pray and get to the message. Thank God. Thank God for his spirit being here. Thank God for his spirit being in us. I thank God for us yielding to his spirit. But let us pray. Dear gracious God, we always give you praise and thanks, Lord, for you alone are worthy. You are God and God all by yourself. None other like you. And we thank you, Lord, for just uh, allowing us to be part of your family and uh, your church to come and just worship you and, and just praise you and thank you for all that you have done, all you're about to do, Lord. And we just give you praise. We give you thanks for you alone, you alone, you alone are worthy. 
Thank you, Father God. Bless today, Lord. Continue to bless us. Bless me now as I stand before your people to preach a word, Lord. I, I pray that you just anoint me afresh from on high. Give me preaching power, Lord, for I have no power in and of myself. I thank you for setting the atmosphere to make preaching easy, Lord. Just thank you for your spirit that empowers me to make preaching powerful and effective, Lord. So use me today for your glory. And I always give you the thanks, the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord, for it's you that is doing everything. So give so we just bless you now, Lord. Work it out, Lord. Work out that with that life that's topsy-turvy, the one that's unsaved. Lord, touch them. Let them know they need to be saved. The one that needs to be restored, let them know you're a restorer, you're a repairer of the breach. And we just give you thanks in Jesus' name, Lord. Do it for your glory. Do it for your glory. And we say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Everybody over the house, give him praise. Tell him thank you. Thank you. If you haven't said it yet today, you ought to say it now. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Turn with me quickly to 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. If you don't have your Bible with you, it's going to be on your screen in, in just a second. You can read along as we read it on the screen. But if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, the 16th. Just a few lines here that we're going to read and get out of your way. Amen. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter in the sixth verse, it says, In the NIV, New International Version, it says these words here. Keep on praising them. That's all right. I, amen. It says in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, the 16th verse, it says, Be joyful always, or rejoice evermore. 
pray without ceasing in everything, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I want to talk today about a life of thanksgiving, a life of thanksgiving. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Wanted to come from this subject of life of a thanksgiving. We, we've had our, our, our crusade, and the crusade was centered around thanksgiving. A couple of great messages preached on Thursday and Friday concerning thanksgiving. Um, uh, in, 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 uh, on Thursday, the preacher spoke on, on giving thanks in all things, and, and coming from Philippians, the fourth chapter, on, on Friday night, the young man spoke about the one uh, man that came back that had, was cured of, of leprosy and came back and had good manners enough to come turn around and tell Jesus, thank you for what the Lord had done for him. But I want to talk today and just go a different, little, on the same vein of, of thank you, but I want to talk about a life of thanksgiving and coming from First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, in these just three short verses, uh, verse 16 verse 17 and verse 18. Now, we, we know that Paul, many know that, if you don't know, Paul is the author of this letter, Paul the Apostle, the one whom uh, was, was anointed technically uh, on the Damascus Road when, when, God, when Jesus himself struck him down uh, as he was going to crucify Christians. Uh, Jesus met Saul on the Damascus Road and, and struck him down with blindness and and, and, and asked Paul, why, why do you continue to kick against the prick? Why do you continue to kick against the conviction that Stephen gave you, telling you that I am the Christ? And, and, and Paul said, who art thou? And he said, I, I am the Lord. I, I am Jesus. He, and, and so Paul, with that experience, realized that Christ was real. And, and Paul gave his whole heart, his whole life, his whole ministry to the Lord because of that experience, realizing that Christ is real. And when Paul became an apostle, of Jesus Christ, he didn't just sit down on his religion. He didn't just sit down on what God had given him already. He built upon it, he used it, and he went out and he began to preach the gospel everywhere, began to establish churches. Even though his life was threatened at every hand, Paul still did what God called him to do. And he went out, and, and again, like I said, he established many churches, and Thessalonica is one of the churches that he established. And it was a, a a mixed church. It was mixed with Jews and Gentiles alike, and 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 he and he uh, established them, and they were precious in his uh, eyesight. He was precious. They were dear to his heart, and and they believed that this was one of the uh, most special churches to him. In the way he wrote the le the letter to them, but these people were precious to him. And Paul writes them to encourage them in their Christian life. Because he wanted them to realize that this Christian life that we live, it's not a sprint. That this is a long haul journey. It's a long distance run. It, it just doesn't happen overnight. You know, and some people think that's the way it is. You know, you get saved one day and you buy the Bible the next day and you ought to be in the pulpit preaching the next week. It doesn't happen like that. It, it takes some development. It, ta it, it takes some maturity. This Christian life is not a sprint where you're going to get there quick, fast, in a hurry. You have to be still every now and then and let the Lord work on you. Hello. Tell, tell your neighbor you got to be still still. It's kind of like that lump of clay that was on the potter's wheel. That, that, that lump was there and the potter made it, but he looked at it and saw there were some flaws and some scars in it. So he broke it down, didn't throw it away, and he remade that lump again into a vessel that would give him glory. That's the way we are. We're on that potter's wheel, and sometimes you just got to be still and let the Lord work on you. Let him make you into what he wants you to be, and quit trying to be who you want to be, and let God tell you who he wants you to be, and let him make you and mold you and shape you. In other words, it's a process. Tell your neighbor it's a process. It's going to take some time to develop you into who you're going to be over time. Anybody know how quick a mushroom grows? A mushroom will sprout up within a day. And you could just go to a mushroom, pluck it up, crush it in your hand, and it's gone. That's a mushroom. But if, but if anybody, you ever saw a sequoia or an oak tree, it takes, uh, it takes hundreds of years for that sequoia to get as big as it gets. 
And, 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 and when the storm comes, that sequoia is able to stand the test of time. It's able to stand in that storm because it took all that time to develop. I'm just putting out a warning. Those who want to get it quick, fast, in a hurry and be all that and a, and a bag of chips, too, in a day or so, it's not going to happen. You can get saved instantly, but to get to where God wants you to be, it's going to take some time. It's a process. Tell your neighbor it's a process. It's a process, and don't be afraid of the process. But Paul wanted them to realize this thing isn't going to, it, it isn't going to happen overnight. It isn't going to just take, you know, a day or two or a week. It's not even going to take a year sometime. Some folk are being, the, in fact, if we were to tell the truth, we're being developed day by day by day. Regardless of what your position may be, your status, who you think you are, who you want to be, all of us are being transformed and renewed day by day. And I, I, I turned 60 on, on uh, oh, Lord. One of those senior moments. <laughs> I turned 60 on Wednesday, and I thank God. Woo. I thank God. What they say, like that fine wine. Getting better with time. But I'm getting better because the Lord is still working on me. And I don't mind telling you, I'm still a work in progress. Anybody that thinks they've arrived already, I feel sorry for you because Paul even says, I have not yet apprehended that thing that I'm apprehended of. He said, I'm still pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. He, he said, there's still some work that needs to be done in me. Anybody in here still need some work on them? Or y'all already, okay, I'm glad I'm not by myself. I'm a work in progress. I know my name is house, but I, God is still working on this house. Amen. Amen. So Paul wanted to write them, let them know it's going to take some time. He didn't want them to become discouraged because things weren't, weren't happening automatically and overnight. They were becoming disheartened, so he wrote them. And because of their trials and the pressures and, and the temptations that were around them according to the world and how they were living around them, and even because they were having setbacks, uh, 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 he, he wrote to them because living in this world, living in the reality of the world, world that's going on around us, it's not easy all the time. It, it's not easy. I know it may be easy for you, but it's not easy for me all the time. Every now and then I have some trials and tribulation. Every now and then the world throws something at me I didn't see coming. But thank God Jesus saw it coming and he prepared a way. But I thank God that we're in a process. Life is not easy. But for, but, uh, for, for these people, where they were in, in Thessalonica and them being a mixed congregation, uh, things were a little bit uh, uh, more difficult for them uh, as far as what the world was throwing at them and really as far as what the religious world was throwing at them. And, and so because they were not strong, he writes to them. And I want to let you know that if you're not strong and firmly rooted in your faith, you might become disappointed every now and then and even want to turn back. I know nobody in here wants to turn back, but I know we've been disappointed every now and then and questioning God. God, why did this happen like this? Why do I have to go through this? Uh, uh, why is my family going through? We go through because it's a process. Uh, in order for that, that black lump of coal to become a diamond, it's got to go through a process. It's got to have some pressure put on it for years and years and years and years and years and then finally that black lump of coal that we would probably just throw away and throw out it becomes a precious stone it becomes a diamond I don't mind being that lump of coal right now because I look at Christ and I see what I'm going to be and I don't mind going through the process. I just want to encourage you and tell you, don't get disappointed because life gets rough. When you got saved, that's when the devil put you on his hit list. As long as you weren't saved, he didn't care about you because you were going to hell anyway. But now that you've gotten saved, you are one of the most wanted down at the post office of hell. I just want to let you know, be encourage your neighbor, tell him it's going to be all right. 
It's going to be all right. I know it gets hard sometimes, but it's going to be all right. The psalmist in the 73rd number of Psalm, the psalmist even makes a testimony there. And he said, y'all know something? I almost slipped. My feet had almost slipped. I almost, in other words, he said, I was moving up, but my feet began to slip, and I was going backwards. And he said, I almost did the moonwalk back into what I used to do. Because I was looking at the wicked and it looked like the wicked were prospering every day and life was hard on me. The wicked were making money, standing on the corner, bringing in money, cheating people on Wall Street and making money. And here I am working a hard job, working a job uh, and, and, and the money not coming in right. But I look at the wicked and it seems that they were prospering and I almost slipped until I thought of the goodness of the Lord. Come on, somebody. He's a keeper. Tell your neighbor he's a keeper. Just want to let you know this is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And so it, it, it's not always going to be uh, easy to live a saved life. I know it's easy for some. I know some, some of us, you know, butter won't melt in our mouth, you know, and we're on our way to heaven anyhow, and, and God calls us up, asks for advice, because we already made it. We're already there. But, but it, it, it's not easy for the rest of us. And so Paul writes to encourage this, this uh, church at Thessalonica, these Christians, in, uh, and, and writes to encourage and strengthen them in their daily walk with the Lord. And so uh, I want you to just encourage the next one to you and tell them you're victorious. You already got the victory. You already got the victory. You already got it. You're, it it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Yeah, yeah. God's got even better for the, you than what you could imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anybody go through anything in the last week or last month? Tell your neighbor you're coming out. You're coming out. In, in, in fact, you're coming out better than what you went in. Yeah. Uh, what, what Reverend said the other day, uh, talking about the, the uh, uh, um, thank God you don't look like what you've been through. Because you're looking good today. And if you've been going through something, I can't tell. And you know why that is? Because the grace of God's on your life. He won't let you look like what you've been through. He won't let you look like the world unbeat you up one side. and He's going to still bring you out like pure gold. You're coming out. You're coming out in Jesus' name. But in this letter, and I'm all, uh, let, me, let me hurry on. In this letter, uh, in this letter to Thessalonica, Paul reminds them in verse 14, he reminds them of their labor of love. He reminds them of their, their, their sanctification. He reminds of, of uh, uh, and, and teaches them about their loved ones. They had a concern about their loved ones that had died all rather, already, whether or not they would be left behind in the resurrection. So he, he put something in there to encourage them that they won't be left behind. And so he hits a number of things, their labor of love, their sanctification. They've been set apart. They're sanctified. And I'm so glad we are in that sanctified number. I got any sanctified folk in the house? I, I'm so glad that we've learned better because back in the day when I was a child, sanctif sanctified was a church down the street. Sanctified was a denomination. But I'm so glad that as I grew and I learned, I learned that sanctification is not a denomination. Sanctification is a state of being. You're either sanctified, set apart, by God or you're not. So I'm so glad that, that we are sanctified. I'm glad I'm sanctified. I got any sanctified folk in the house. You've been set apart by God himself. And so he reminds them of all these things. And, and, uh, he, and so it's needful that he gives them words of encouragement and instruction. And so at near the end of the letter, near the end of the letter here, Paul gives them final exhortation and final instructions. And as we move back up to verse 14, he says, And we urge you, brethren, warn those who are idle. You know, in other words, encourage, uh, warn those that are idle. In, order, in other words, encourage them and, and let them know it's time to get busy for the Lord. God's bless you. God's giving you ability. God's giving you spiritual gifts that you haven't even tapped into. Stir them up. It's time to get busy in the Lord. Later on for being idle, standing by the wayside, waiting on somebody to come and ask you. No, you step up and tell somebody, I need a job. I want to do something. I can do this. And, and so he said, it's time. Uh, encourage those who are idle. Encourage the timid 
and the weak. And so he's, he's uh, uh, just giving some encouragement here. Warn, warn, he even says, warn the unruly, warn the faint, comfort the fainthearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. So Paul gives some real good instruction there uh, to this church and to these brethren as he's closing out this letter. But I want to just stay here around verse 16, 17, and 18. Um, because we've got to have a strong foundation in what we do. And Paul said, be joyful. I'm reading NIV. He said, be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God concerning you. This is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. This is God's will for you. And so let's dwell here for a little while. Is that all right? I know I'm hurrying, but I'm trying to pour, as, as, as Reverend Hinton, Apostle Hinton would say, I'm trying to pour a quart into a pint this morning. Y'all done shouted and took and, and danced, and I, I, didn't, I wanted to let y'all, let us just praise God as long as we could. And, and, and so I'm just going to hurry up, get to my point, and do what God assigned me to do and get out the way. Maybe we can do some more dancing at the end. We'll see. We'll see. Amen. But, but l- let me get to my point. Amen. In verse 16. Let's us know that we've got to be rooted, planted, and grounded in who Christ is. We've got to be planted like that tree that's been uh, planted by the river of waters that's going to yield its fruit in, all, in, in, every, in, 12, in its season, and, and whatsoever we do shall not prosper. We've got to be planted in who Christ is. So let's look at what Paul says to us here. Paul says, be, jo- be joyful always. Rejoice always. Understand something, rejoicing is something that happens on the spiritual side. Because sometimes we get caught up in being happy. It's all right to sing with Pharrell. You know, if you're happy, well, I don't even know the song. Clap your hands if you're happy, do a dance if you're happy, you know, sing along. It's all right to sing that. I like that song. In fact, it's a kind of a catchy tune. But, but happiness is based on what's happening around you. And and if that's going to dictate how my spirit feels, then then I'm not going to be happy all the time. I'm going to be upset. My spirit is going to be upset every now and then because everything that's happening around me is not good to me. Sometimes it's not good for me. Sometimes it hurts. Come on, somebody. Maybe I'm the only one that's been through hurtful things. That's yeah, and so we can't let our spirit be based on what's happening around us. We, our spirit has to be rooted and grounded on what's happened inside of us. And so he says here, rejoice always. Rejoicing is a spiritual thing because joy is not based on what's happening. It's based on what has already happened in our life, and that's that we're born again. Oh, y'all not going with me on that. That's, that's all right. That's all right. Re- rejoicing. Rejoicing is an inside thing. And I thank God that I have joy on the inside. But he says, but he says rejoy- be joyful always or rejoice always. Now, <laughs> even though I may, I'm 60 years old. I thank God. I, I'm gonna say that for I'm gonna say that for the next 300 and 300 and how many days left? 58 days. I'm I'm proud to be 60. Some folk get 60 and go through a midlife crisis trying to be 30 again. Run out and buy a brand new red sports car. I've already been through the red sports car when I was 20. I can't go back there. I won't go back. And, you know, so I, I, I'm not trying to be 30, 45 anymore. I, I, I'm so glad. But let me move on. Oh, we tired of him talking about 60. Uh, I just want to let you younger folk, it feel good to be 60. And saved, hello, somebody. But, but, but I, I said that to say this. I'm 60, but because I'm born again, you know what I am? I'm brand mm, I'm brand new. Oh, you got all that gray hair on your head, your head thinning, you got wrinkles, you, you got a little hunch in your back, your knees. Oh, no, I don't know. I'm brand new, baby. I, <laughs> I wish I had some brand new folk that were over 60 years old up in, over 30, over 40 years old, didn't mind telling folk I'm brand new. Don't care what I look like, I'm brand new. 
brand new. I may have a few wrinkles, some gray hair, but I thank God I am brand new. I couldn't do it. I've been trying to dye. I'm a, I talk too much up here. Been trying to dye my hair and, and do all this other stuff. And when I show up with the, the rinse in my hair, y'all automatically know. And y'all just sit there and look. <laughs> and that lets me know that y'all think I've lost my mind. So... Grecian formula, 400, I, I forget the Grecian formula, it's going to get gray, you're going to see it get white, and I don't care because I'm still brand new. When I live, and I, I, I'm blessing, I'm hoping God allows me to get 80 in good health, 100 in good health, when I reach 100 years old, you know what I'm still going to be? Brand spanking new. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. Do I have any brand new folk in the house today been born again? If you've been born again, you are brand new. Tell your neighbor, I'm brand new. I may have some wrinkles, but I'm brand new. I may have a little age on me, but I'm brand spanking new. I'm in Jesus. And, and, and so, and so he's, he, Paul is, is, is <laughs> Paul, yeah, y'all look, yeah, amen. Tell yourself you're brand new. Take off the wig and just throw it and say, I'm brand, no, you don't, no. No, you ain't that new, are you? <laughs> Y'all come on back in. Come on back in the spirit. Come on back in. <laughs> but he says, rejoice. He says, rejoice. And I just want to make the point, it's not based on what's happening. It's based on what's in the, on the inside. And he says, what does he say here in verse 16? He says, just rejoice, right? No, that isn't all he said. What does he say? He says rejoice always. Rejoice always. We ought to be in the constant state of rejoicing. Why? Why, preacher? I, I had to go through a, a, a few things. Just like you said, you, you know, you have some ups and downs. Preacher, I've got ups and downs too. And you don't know what I've been through. You don't know that I had to bail my son out of jail last week. You don't know that I had to bury my mother last year. You don't know that my child is, you don't know what I'm going through, preacher. And you talking about rejoice? Yes, rejoice, because it's not based on what's happening. When you rejoice, you can change your environment. Oh, somebody need to get this. I, I tried to tell you a couple weeks ago that you are the season changer in your environment. When you begin to rejoice and have that uplifted spirit, it's going to change things around you. When you learn how to rejoice when folk cuss you out, it's going to change that person's heart when you say, that's all right, God bless you, and I still love you. When you learn how to rejoice in front of your family, that wayward son, that wayward daughter going to say, mom and daddy for real with this thing, and it's going to change. Tell your neighbor to rejoice. I don't care what you're going through. You need to learn how to rejoice. Whatever's happened to you yesterday, that's all right. Look back at it and rejoice because God has brought you through it. You ought to give God some praise in the house. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. We learn how to rejoice always. Be, rejoice. Why? I'm rejoicing because I know I'm a child of the king. Hello, somebody. I'm child of the King of King and Lord of Lord. Rejoice because God has made you more than a conqueror. You have the victory. Rejoice. The victory is yours. You say, I can't see it yet. I don't care what you can't. What I'm talking, I done told you about trying to look at what you can see. Don't look at what you can see. God says you got the victory. For that reason alone, you ought to re. Tell your neighbor, rejoice. You got Holy Ghost on the inside of you. You got power inside of you. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you can't think of anything else to rejoice about, rejoice about who lives in you. Rejoice, rejoice. Can't pay my bills. That's all right. Paul said, my God shall supply all. How many of your needs? All you need, God is true and faithful to what he says. Rejoice. Somehow the bills are going to get paid. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm not this one that just believes God just going to drop money out of heaven. I don't know, but if you follow behind a Brinks truck and a bag of money fall out, uh, 
Turn it in, 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 turn it in. Turn it in. Whew. They ain't going to miss it no how. I, no, turn it in, turn it in. Praise the Lord. I, I don't know how God's going to do it, and I don't dare want to put God in a, in a, bind him up and put him in a box and tell you how God is going to bless you. I know a lot of, a lot of, a lot of us preachers and pastors tell you, you know, you, you give that $700, Dollar blessing, you know, if you if you in need and you give that seven hundred dollar, but I'm in need. How am I give seven hundred dollars? Okay, seventy dollars. Well, my light bill seventy dollars. I can't pay. Okay, seven dollars. You give seven dollars today, and in seven days, God's gonna turn around and bless you with seventy thousand dollars in your. I, I can't do that. God may not want to bless you like that. God may have another way of bless you. I, but all I know is He's gonna bless you. All I know is that you're coming through whatever you're in. And that's a reason to rejoice. And, and some, I read somewhere where he said, not only rejoice, but again, I say, what? Rejoice. In other words, once you get done rejoicing and you think about the goodness of God and all he's done for you. I don't know, Brother Jojo may be tired or whatever. I know he, but, but, but Brother Jojo, when the time comes, when you catch your second win, you know what you ought to do? Rejoice again. When you realize what God has brought you through, now I know you shouted through it, but you ought to, when you look back, you ought to do what? Rejoice again. Give God some praise in the house. Come on, give him some joy. Give him some joy. Give him some good. His mercy is good. God is always good. And, and remember when he sent those 12 on, on that uh, missionary journey and he sent them out two by two, told them don't take staff, don't take purse, don't take anything with you and, and don't take a change of shoes. That, but, but he said, go out and, and, and do what I told you to do. And they came back rejoicing. And the Bible said they were rejoicing because of the demons. They had control over the demons. They were healing people and they were rejoicing because, whoo, this Holy Ghost power was just flowing from them. And they were rejoicing because of that. And he said, hold up, fellas, hold up, hold up. No, 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 you're, you're, getting, you're getting mixed up here because you stay on what, what you're able to do in the power of God, you're going to get caught up and think you got the power. Don't rejoice. He said, don't rejoice in that. He said, what you really need to rejoice in is that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Do I have any folk in here that have their name written in the Lamb's book of life? Anybody has been born again and Jesus has signed your name? Well, you've got a reason to rejoice just for that because you've been born again. And that's the important thing. The real reason to rejoice is because you've been born again. Amen? Amen. Let me move on. Let me hurry on and move on. But then he says, not only rejoice, you ought to be, have a joyful spirit all the time. When folk come around you, you ought to be oozing joy. It's a shame when you come around some Christian, some folk that claim to be saved, some folk that are in church on Sunday and you can't sit them down. You can't, woo, hot, yeah, they're doing all this and all that. But when they get out in the world and you look at them and, and they look sad, bad, well, sometimes even when they come to church, they look sad, bad, and mad like they've been boxing George Foreman all night or sleeping with an alligator or, or, or you know, drinking prune juice, sucking on a lemon, all those up negative con connotations. And they look like that sometimes. And you wonder, what is wrong with them? What is wrong? Are you saved? Are you are you, and I hate to say really, but are you really saved? Do you really know the Lord? And you walk around like that and you don't, half the time you want to keep them at arm's distance. You don't want to have anything to do with them because they're so negative. But, but let me tell you something. The joy that you have, if it's real, if it's real, again, I keep going back to this. I'm talking about seasons changing. I'm, I'm for real with this. The joy you have, if you keep rejoicing. That means joy is going to keep coming out. It's going to keep bubbling out. And when it bubbles out, because God gives us a joy we can't keep on the inside. And when it bubbles out, you know what, what it does when it bubbles out? My, 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 my grandson had me, tried to get me to make some oatmeal one day. And y'all know I can't cook. I could barely use the microwave, and so I put the oatmeal in the microwave, and I put a, a, a jug of water in there. I mean, I put about... Yeah, I, I, I thought it was supposed to be soup. So I, I put a good portion of water in there. And, and in about 30 seconds, the oatmeal had just bubbled all out of everything. And, I, and it was all over. 
But it, it came out because it kept growing and growing <laughs> in the bowl. That's the way our joy ought to be in us. If we really have joy, even when you put heat to it, it ought to, it ought to just flow and come on out. And everybody ought to see the overflow. In other words, you're going to change folk around you because you got joy. Because you got the joy of the Lord. You're a change agent. Tell your neighbor you're a change agent. Yeah, 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 you're a change agent. Y'all tell them, I got the joy of the Lord. Where? Where? Oh, y'all ain't old enough. Y'all, the, the young people tell them, what are they talking about? Yeah, we got the joy, 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 joy down in my... Yeah, that's where it ought to be, down in your heart, coming out, because what's in the heart, eventually, if you got that joy, it ought to come out. But let, let me move on. So, so he says, uh, uh, be joyful, be joyful always. And then secondly, he says, and, uh, uh, pray without ceasing. Now, I know that's puzzled people, because they ask, what does that mean, pray without ceasing? Does that mean I go around all the time just with, you know, kind of mumbling a prayer, you know, oh God, you know, folk, folk want to talk to me and I tell them, no, no, I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm praying. All, is that what that means, that you're always praying, you can't do anything else because it says pray without ceasing, right? And so does that mean I'm always saying a prayer, uh, 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 honey, they get ready to cut the lights off. Oh, I'm praying on that. No, go down and pay the bill. No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that we're walking around always praying, literally praying. But what it means, it means that, uh, uh, that what we're doing, it, it not necessarily it means that we're praying all the time, but it means that we're faithful in our prayer time with God. That's one of the first things it means, just, just the most basic things. It means that we're fa faithful in our prayer time. When we set a date with God to pray, a set a time with God, God, I'm going to meet you every day at 5 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 8 whatever your time schedule is, it means that we're, we're, we're not going to cease in meeting him there in that special place, in that special time in our schedule. And so we're faithful at least to a prayer time with God. Take note. Somebody take a note. I hope all y'all wrote that down. Faithful in a time to pray. Not when you see the disconnect notice coming in the mail, but before the disconnect. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it means to have open and continuous communication with God. You may not see my lips moving, but deep down on the inside, I've got something to say to God. And God has got something to say to me. And, and so it, 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 it's kind of like the song, it means that we're in communication. It's kind of like the songwriter of old put it. He put it this way, and I know any of y'all under, under 40 don't know this song. It says, I've come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. And then he goes on and says, and he walks with me. And he what? Talks. Talks with me. He's speaking about that intimate time with God. And then what does he say, Reverend Baskin? He tells me that I am his own. He tells me that I am his favorite. Woo. Anybody walk with him and he tells you that you're his favorite? See, I thought he was just telling me that. But he tells all of his children that you're my own, you're my favorite. Peggy, are you his favorite? I'm his favorite. Any other favorites in here? If you're born again, you're his favorite. <laughs> He's big enough to have everybody as his favorite. And, 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 and it says, and the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. But the point is, he walks with me and he talks with me. There's that communication. He says, I go early in the morning while the dew is still on the roses. You need an early morning prayer life because the world is going to throw something at you you can't handle. Hell is going to rear its ugly head and try and get you off track. You need to get early in the morning and head it off at the pass instead of waiting on it to happen and then talk about Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, you better already have Jesus on the line. Oh, let me, let me move on. I'm almost through here. I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to get out. But he said, pray without ceasing. Everything we do ought to be bathed in prayer. 
It ought to be saturated and covered in prayer, everything we do. I'm talking about in our personal lives. Get ready. You, you get uh, choosing the college you're going to go to. Pray about it. See what God tells you. You know, you're trying to get in Yale and Harvard, and God bless you, and I thank God for you that have the, the credentials to get into Harvard. I've been in Harvard. It ain't all that prestigious. <laughs> all right, we just went on a tour, okay? All right. <laughs> it's a nice place, a very nice place. But, but God may not be telling you to go to Harvard. He may be telling you to go to seminary. Oh. He may be telling you to go to Bible college and learn of me. Come. I'm, oh, y'all looking crazy. I ain't. I'm just saying, even when you're doing that, when you get ready to get married, you need to pray. When you find that special one or that one you think is your special one, you especially need to pray and ask God to direct you. The Bible says, he who finds, he who finds, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. But you better make sure you found it under the direct, found her under the direction of Holy Ghost. And ladies, I'm going to just share this with you. This isn't in my notes. But pray about your future husband. And, uh, and again, just because he's tall, dark, and handsome doesn't mean he's going to be your husband. So if, if it don't fit, don't force it. Uh-huh. I, I know some of y'all got tall, dark, and handsome husbands. Don't look at them now. You got them now. <laughs> All I'm saying is it, everything we do, everything we do, when you get ready to have children, pray about it. Pray about everything. Pray about everything. When you get ready to buy a car, pray about it. Pray about it. God will give you wisdom. God will open up doors. But pray about it. Everything we do needs to be bathed and covered in prayer. And especially here in the house of God. The reason why we are impotent sometimes or, or unable to do what we want to do is because what we want to do may be a good idea, but it's not a God idea. And, and so we have to make sure it's in God's plan also because God blesses whatever his plan is. And his plan is going to take precedence. His plan is going to come through. And we may spend years and years struggling in our own might because we haven't really been in touch with the Lord. It may have sounded good, and everything that sounds good is not godly. Everything that sounds good and looks good elsewhere is not good for this house. And so we have to pray. And that's why I said last week, I said last week, if we ever needed a, a strong prayer ministry, we need it now. Oh, I thought I was going to get a whole lot of amen on that. We need it now. We need praying warriors to step up to the plate because now is the time to be praying and praying about everything and everybody in the house. We need to pray. And, 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 and prayer, what is prayer? What is prayer? What is prayer? Prayer is having a, just having a little talk with Jesus. That's what the old folks say. Just a little talk with Jesus. And then what they say, they say, just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. Just a little talk. Just a little talk. Anybody got Jesus on speed dial? Is, is he on your Facebook where you could just? He ought to be on your speed dial. And you shouldn't have to reach for your phone to get him. What do you mean, Brother Preachy? Reach for your phone. Uh, 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 pastor, can you pray? I'm not Jesus. Deacon, can you pray for? Now, I'll pray for you. Don't get me wrong. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. But I'm going to ask you, what do you want me to touch and agree on? What have you already prayed on? Because I want to go according to what God has laid on your heart. But you need to be able to get God for yourself. And when you get God for yourself, you need to know that God is going to answer your prayer. You don't have to go to the priest anymore. Let, let me, I'm almost through. I'm almost through. I, I, so so uh, um, it, it, we ought to be in prayer. We ought to be in prayer. Uh, uh, pray without ceasing. In other words, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't, don't, don't. What's that song you say? Don't you stop it. Don't you. Don't stop the praying. Is that the song? Wait, I done went back. I done lost Tell your neighbor, don't stop praying. 
You don't know nothing about that. You too young. You too young. So y'all, y'all clowning now. Y'all messing me. I done lost my point. I done lost my point. Where was it? Where was our sister house? I know she's saying, boy, get back on point. Praying continually. And then the third thing, and I'm going to be out of your way. I'm serious. Third thing, and I'm going to be all out of your way. Not only does he say always, uh, uh, be, uh, rejoice always, pray continually, but he says, give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks. Mm. King James says, in everything, give thanks. Somebody say everything. everything. Note, note now, he didn't put restrictions or qualifications on everything. In other words, he did not say, uh, uh, pray, give thanks in everything that's good to you. He didn't say everything that's beneficial, everything that's nice, everything that's pleasing, everything you want give thanks. He, he did not say that. He simply just says, in everything. Somebody say everything. everything. What does everything mean? It means exactly what it says. Everything, all things in them give thanks. Everything means everything. Am I right? And so that's real simple. So Paul tells us give thanks in everything. Mm. In the good times, and the bad. But the shame of it is that even in the good times, sometimes we neglect to give God thanks. As long as things are going good, we kind of sidestep altar call. We don't, we don't you know, need to come to church that much because we got money in the bank. The house note is paid. The lights are on. And we're doing good. I'm talking about some folk now. And because things are going good, that line, that hot line to Jesus isn't that hot anymore. But even in our good times, we need to be continually giving him thanks. I'm reminded, so those of you from old school, from when, when Pastor Wald was here, Pastor Wald made the analogy that some folk are like those hogs rutting and eating under that acorn tree. Bunch of acorns have fallen off the tree, and the hogs are down there just eating those acorns, and they just snorting and grouting and just eating and eating and eating. And you look at the hogs, and all of them have their face buried in, in, in the acorns in the ground. They got their face buried in the blessing. But none of those hogs ever take out time to look up to where the acorns come from because they don't care. As long as it's in front of them, that's all they want. Some folk are like those hogs, never taking time to look up to where the blessing came from, never taking time to look up and say thank you. Come on, somebody. I don't want us to be like that. Every blessing, even the one that seems insignificant, you ought to thank God for it. When you get up in the morning, I know we say, we, we, we give that testimony, you know, I woke up in the morning, I prayed, but we ought to wake up every day. And because you can draw a good, healthy breath, you ought to just simply say, thank you, Lord. That may be all you can do, but tell them thank you because you can do that. If you can get out of your bed and walk and put on your clothes and eat your, and fix some food and do the oatmeal right and, and make a breakfast, you ought to tell them thank you. If you can look around and your kids are in the house but they're doing okay, you ought to tell them thank you. They may not be as completely obedient as you want them to be, but because they're yours and they're a gift to you, you ought to tell them thank you. If you look at your husband, look at your wife, I, I know they may be giving you headaches and, 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 and everything else that a husband or a wife is, is supposed to, no, they're not supposed to do that. But they may, but even though they've got on your last nerve last night, you still ought to look at them and tell them, God, thank you for my husband. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for, come on, some, oh, y'all. He says, in everything, give thanks. Not necessarily for everything. Because when I'm going through the storm at my, and y'all got to get this one here, in my immature state, when I'm going through the storm, it sounds foolish to me to thank him for the storm. And so Paul kept it simple. He said, just yes, in the storm, thank him. You're getting beat up and, and rained on and hail coming down and everything else falling on you and being pushed by the winds. He said, just thank him while you're in the storm. Lord, lead me and guide me through the storm. Thank him while you're in the storm. But once you get out of the storm, when you get a little maturity on you, you're going to look back at the storm and you're going to say, Lord, I thank you for the storm. 
because the storm made me stronger. The storm kept me on my knees. The storm helped me develop. The storm helped me to be, it build my faith. It helped me to realize, Lord, you'll bring me through even the storms of life. But Paul kept it simple, and he said, in everything, give thanks. When you're going through, give them thanks. Tell them thank you, Lord. Tell them thank you. God has been good to us. So we need to, even in the storm, when it rains on us, tell them thank you. When we're going through the joy and the pains of life, tell them thank you. Even when circumstances are hurtful and unpleasant, we need to tell him thank you. Thank you. Anybody going through anything right now? While you're in the midst of it, you ought to tell them thank you. You ought to have a praise party while you're in the midst of it. Praise party, praise party. Why, 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 why have a praise party in the midst of what I'm going through? It's hurting me. I don't like it. I want to get out of it. Folks see that I'm hurting. It's starting to show now, and I, I want to get out of it. But you ought to have a praise party in the midst of whatever you're going through. Why? Because when you praise God in the midst of what you're going through, it gives the devil's conniptions and fits. It confuses the devil because he don't know how to act now. Because he threw that thing in there for evil. And here you are shouting through it. You just messed the devil up. Woo, he done, uh, yeah, the devil, devil, the devil laid him off for the second time. They, you go to the job and they lay you off and, and give you that pink slip and all of a sudden you start shouting right there. You will blow their mind. They'll probably say, well, he didn't want to work here anyway. And, and you probably tell them, you're right. Because I know if God closes, if, if one door, man closes one door, God's going to open another door. Tell the boss, man, I'm shouting. No, this was a good job. I didn't want to lose it. This was a good job. It helped pay the house rent. It helped pay the car note. It helped pay the lights and the gas. I thank God for the job then, and you allowed me to work here this long. But now since you gave me a pink slip and closed the door on me, there's another door open that's better than this door, and I'm just shouting till I get to the other door, that's all. And God has something better in store for you. When you learn how to praise him at your lowest point, he can't help lift you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he. <laughs> when we learn how to praise him in what we're going through, it, it builds our faith. It says that I trust God. No matter what may come to pass, I trust him. I trust him. You remember the three Hebrew boys. And I'm, I'm going to sit down. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to hoop on them. I, you know, I, I could if I wanted to, but I, I'm not. The, the three Hebrew boys, you remember them. They were, uh, they were told to bow down at the sound of the music and worship, worship this idol, and they were faithful and dedicated to the Lord. They told Pharaoh, they, uh, we ain't bowing down. We, no, 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 we, we're not bowing down. He said, you know we're going to throw you in here, and this is heated seven times hotter than it's ever been heated before. They said, we don't care. We, we're, we're not interested in that. He said, they said, you could throw us in there. But we're, that's all right. We, we serve a God that is able to deliver us from the heat. And whether he delivers us or not, he's still able. And so we're going to give him praise. We're not bowing down to your idol. And sure enough, yeah, they heated it seven times. And when the fella went over there to check it, he fell down dead because it was so hot. And they threw them in there, and you know the rest of the story. No, they don't, Melvin. Let me finish the rest of the story. Let me finish... Thank you. Bless your heart. Everybody doesn't know the story. And I know you all from old school. I'm not, that's why I'm not going to preach it because it, it'll preach for all by itself. I'm not going to preach it, though. But the boys, they were thrown in, in the fiery furnace, and, and, and they threw them in there. And after a while, uh, uh, Pharaoh said, hey, hey, go check and check on them. Now, why would you have to check on somebody and you threw them in a furnace? You should have automatically known that they would be incinerated instantly. But see, Pharaoh, uh-uh, Pharaoh heard them say that our God is able. And even if he doesn't deliver us, he's still able. Pharaoh heard that. And so he said, well, just, 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 just in case, go check on them. And the fellow went up, got as close as he could to the door, 
And he said, hey, Pharaoh, man, you ought to check this out. Didn't we throw three in there? He says, I see the three Hebrew boys. I see Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad nigga, Abednego. I see them in there, but I see the fourth one that looks like the Son of God. I believe God sent his son and stepped in that furnace because they were rejoicing in all things. They were praising God even in the midst of facing death. And God said, I can't help but move on something like that. I can't help but to rescue my children. I just want to leave you with this. Pray without, be, be, uh, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. But I found out it's easy to give praise on Sunday morning. It's easy to give praise when the Hammond organ is going. It's easy to give praise when the drummer gives you a beat. It's easy when you get, uh, when you get uh, uh, exhorted and, and encouraged by somebody as, as encouraging as Reverend Baskin. I, 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 come in, I had to come in myself. I understand all that. Woo. That's when it's easy to give praise. But every now and then, you're going to have to push your way to give praise. It's just like that woman that, that, that's giving childbirth. She wants the child to come out. She wants to birth the child. But every now and then, there's a pain where she just says, oh, my God. Life weighs down heavy on us sometimes to where sometimes we feel we're going to break and we just say, oh, my God. But do you not realize that is a praise right there? When you call on God, you're really praising him. And every now and then, you just got to give a sacrifice of praise. You may not feel like it, but lift up your head and say, thank you, Jesus. You may not want it. Mm, because it's hurting. Pastor, you don't know how I've been hurting. No, I may not feel your pain, but I know somebody that's been touched by the feelings of your infirmity. And he says, all you got to do is praise me. All you got to do is thank me. Mm. Does anybody have that push? in your spirit because I'm letting you know it's going to get lonely one of these nights you're not going to be able to get anybody on the phone and you're going to have to learn how to praise him for yourself praise him without the organ being on praise him without the choir singing praise him without the worship leader exhorting you to praise you've got to learn how to praise him for yourself and tell him thank you Regardless of all situation, I'm through, I'm through, I'm through, but I want to just share this one thing with you. I want to share this one thing with you. I don't know if you all saw it, but on Friday night, those of you that were here, whew, the choir, our praise team ministered and, and just lifted our hearts, our spirits. The other choir came and and, and sang and lifted our spirits. Brother Preacher came, preached like it was going out of style. I was so glad he left here from Shiloh, went on back to Bloomington. <laughs> the, boy, he, the young man preached. He preached. He talked about that one leper that turned back and said, thank you. He preached. He preached that thing. Even had nerve enough to, ah, ah, ah. go ahead, boy. You got it. He, he preached. He preached. And, and I'm not making fun of him. I, I appreciate good, strong preaching like that. He, he really preached. But when the little sister came up, his daughter came up. Can I tell y'all the truth? I saw the choir when they came in. And I saw most of them, you know, 18 old and so forth. And I saw these three little, four, three or four little kids over here. And I said, yeah, they just, they got those kids as fillers because they just didn't want to leave in the audience. So they got them kind of standing up here with, with them, you know, because probably mama nearby or something, and, and just got them as fillers. 
And I'm so glad I said that in my mind. Because the Lord laid it on your heart, right, to bring your niece up. And God said, y'all think I'm, I'm, I'm having her sing for you, but I got here her singing for Pastor House. Even though I already knew that young people can be used mightily of the Lord. That little girl came, y'all, yeah, y'all sit down. I, I, I'm just talking. I'm just, if you want to sit down, sit down. I, I, I'm just talking. And the little sister sang. Woo. If she didn't know what she was talking about, she showed up sang like she did. Let me use proper English. She, yeah, she sang. That's correct. Yeah. The girl sang. That's right. And, and she blessed our heart. She took the song up, brought it back down, took us up again, and left us shouting and rejoicing. We, we, we were shouting. We were rejoicing all over the, all over the, the, the sanctuary. Everybody, you know, shouting on the audience. And I don't know if y'all saw the message. Now, it's easy to praise. It's not necessarily easy, but it's, it's easier to praise when the music is playing and when everybody else is shouting. But I don't know if y'all saw. Somebody came from a different room, from the overflow. And the song or the spirit, the message of the song moved them. And they came up here rejoicing, praising God all by themselves. Everybody else is out in the audience praising. And they were praising God. And me and my, with my nerve, I'm sitting over there, and I saw her come up here praising. And I said, Lord, my God, she didn't even have time to take off her apron. That's all I saw at first. I saw the apron. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm 60, you know, I don't. But, uh, and I saw the apron. And I said, my God, she came out so quick, she didn't have time to take off the apron. And then I looked a little bit closer, and somebody said she got on gloves, too, serving gloves. <laughs> Didn't even have time to come out of the plastic glove. Amen. And did she have a headband, a headband? Yeah, yeah. See, I didn't see all that. Yeah. I just saw a message right there. Yeah. It's easy yeah. to praise God yeah. in a crowd. Yeah. But she came out here all by herself. She was praising God. She came to praise him, but she was ready to serve. God just doesn't want our praise. He wants our service. When you praise him, are you coming ready to serve? Are you coming ready to serve? She came ready to serve. And that's what God is calling for. Because we praise him during the good times. And sometimes when we can get a praise out during the bad times. But are we ready to serve? When you come out praising and ready to serve. Not all, it, not all of it now. Not all of it. like you. Oh, you're mighty. You are mighty. Great and mighty God. Lord, you are mighty. You are mighty. Okay, that, that was just a taste. That was just a taste. Because that girl started off, and she was singing. She was going. She was going. I said, okay, she done went over that verse twice. She must have heard me. Because then she took it up a little bit higher, brother Tim. <laughs> she took it on up. She put something else with it. I said, oh, Lord, let me just shut up. Let me just end. But the point is, the point is I'm trying to make. God wants our praise. Yes, he honors our praise, our prayer. But he honors that willing heart that is coming to serve. Some people praise him for a show. But if your praise is for real, you'll serve him. Amen. I'm, I'm through. I'm through. That's my message for today. And when you get to that point, when you get to that point where you come not only to praise him, but to serve him, then you have a life that's full of thanksgiving. 
because it shows. Amen. Come on, give God some praise as you stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Thank God for all of you. Thank God for you. you it's so encouraging. This, mm. But God bless you. There may be someone here today that does not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. You're not in the pardon of, yeah, pardon of your sin. You're not saved. In other words, you have not invited Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior. He says that I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking right now. And he said, if any man will open, I'll come in. I and my father will come in and we'll sup with you. He says, I want to be in your life. I want to be there. I want to be there. So if you're here today and you're not saved and, and, and you feel an inkling to come forth, it's not an inkling. That's the unction of the Holy Spirit telling you you need to be saved today. So if you want to come and be saved, won't you come? If, you if you're not saved, you're not born again, won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Let God speak to your heart. If you're not saved, today is your day of salvation. Won't you come? If you're here today and you, and you don't have a church home, we invite you to make Shiloh your church home. You're always welcome here. We need you and God wants you. So the call of salvation, the call of membership being extended this time, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Give God the praise. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Bless God, bless God. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Amen. I need a couple people come take names. Come, somebody come and help Sister Armour with names. You got help right behind you, Sister Armour. You got help right there. Amen. Thank God for you. Are there any, is there anyone else? Again, the call for salvation, the call for membership being extended at this time. If you're here and you do, and you have a church home that you're away from, maybe it's down in Mississippi, California, somewhere, or that's not convenient for you to worship all the time, and you need a church home, we're inviting you to make Shiloh your church home because we truly need you and God wants you. And I believe this can be the place for you to grow and minister, to be served and to serve. If you need a church home, won't you come? Let God speak to you. Let God speak to you. I remember the day I got saved. Remember the day I got saved? I, and I, God bless you, daughter. God bless you. In fact, in fact, I remember the day, I remember the day I didn't get saved. Some, me, uh, me and a couple other buddies were, I, a couple of buddies and I were, had been called up to the mourner's bench. And we were sitting there, and I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what the mourner's bench meant and all that stuff. And the, the preacher went ahead and preached a revival, and, and he made the altar call. And, and my three buddies jumped up and ran up there and, and, and joined church. I didn't hear the Lord telling me anything at that time. So I didn't move. But Mama explained it to me a little bit better, and I began to pray about it. And within another month or so, I got saved. I received Christ because I understood it, because I knew I needed him in my life. And I thank God for that. And so I didn't have to go through a long ritual or anything, and we don't send you through any long ritual here either at Shiloh. So if God's laid it on your heart, you need to realize that today is your day of salvation. Today.